Hey, welcome to my channel. If you're here, then you have SQL injection questions. And, and in this video, we're gonna look at the backend code of what causes SQL injection. And to my knowledge, there is no other video on all of YouTube that covers SQL injection the way we are about to. So disclaimer, before we jump into it, always remember to use your powers for good. All right, here we are on our landing page for a little React app that I have made just for testing SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and a few other vulnerabilities that we will go through in the future, but we're messing with the login at this point. So we want to type in a user and a password of name. And if we hit login, we get wrong username and password or password. And so one of the things that we can do in SQL injection is bypass this all together. If the code is written poorly on the back end of the server, then we can bypass this all together. And so an example of that is if we use a fake name and then we throw in our single quote everything after this single quote will not matter and i'm going to show you the code for this here in just a second so if we say or one equals one if we put in our semicolon and then our pound symbol it will comment everything out after this point and so now if we type in some password and we hit login it says logged in the reason this happens is because we break this statement and then we give it a true statement right here one always equals one and because we comment out everything coming afterward what we put in the password field does not matter so here is the back end of the database the server side of this query so our database makes a query and the query is we're going to select all which is this symbol right here from the users table where the username equals what we put into it so now watch this this is where our information that we type in right here this goes right here and if we put in our single quote watch what happens it breaks everything after it and so then when we put in our pound sign it comments out everything after it and then we put in our query which is automatically going to be true one equals one because what happens is this error statement right here is looking for a result and the result is going to come back true and so if the if it doesn't send an error right here because in the database it's going to say this is a true statement and it is going to give us the first user in the database now that we have this table pulled up here you can see that it is going to log us in as the first user in the database because that is what it pulls back if it receives a true statement or it would go through and it would say test test to see if this equals the statement and makes it true what we have running here is if we type in test and test and log in it says it's true if we add an extra t it's false and the reason this works is because it goes through and it says is this it no is this it yes but when we add in our SQL statement that looks like this with our, we break the statement and we say or one equals one and then we comment out the rest, this come, becomes true and if this were an actual website, it would log us in as this person right here, which typically is the admin. This is, this is what is called bypassing the authentication for the login. There are other ways that SQL injection can be done beyond just bypassing the login information right here. You can actually pull down information from the table through these queries, which we're actually going to do in a coming video. I'm going to make a video that's a bit longer that's going to cover that. So we want to pull down more information. This is just bypassing the login information. I'm going to show you from the database what this looks like so that you can get a better understanding of what happens when you make union select statements or SQL statements in general. So if we do something like this, and I'm going to cut the video so you don't got to watch me type this in. When we make a statement, let it, let's inspect. When we make a statement that looks like this right here, we're telling the, the database, we want to comment out everything afterward, but then we want to add to it. And so we're saying union select, and then we want to union select, and then we're pulling down how many columns there are. And so if we send this, it's going to tell us that this is a true statement and we're logged in. But if you watch, if we delete one of these nulls right here and we log in, 
it will crash our database. If we come over here, you can see that the app has crashed and we have to restart it. The reason is because this statement is not a true statement. And so it tells us that the app crashes. But if we add in another null here and we send this, our app is running and it has not crashed. So when you make statements like this in the coming video, we're gonna go through this in a lot more detail. This ends up leading to more complex statements and we're able to pull down information from the database. So for example, if we make this statement right here and we send this over to the database, it tells us here's the complete list of usernames and passwords. And you can make statements just like this to the database from the SQL injection and pull down this information. This is why SQL injection is such a big deal and it is such a problem for developers. Now this is really poorly written code. I think you would actually have to go out of your way to write it this way because you're just not going to find this anywhere on Stack Overflow or in best practices. And I'm pretty sure when I start up my app here, it tells me that it's got a whole bunch of vulnerabilities within it. So if we were to make statements from this spot right here to the database, they're going to look something like this. We're going to select all from the information scheme information schema where the table name equals users. So you can see this right here, select all from users where username equals this. This right here is really important to remember that this is what the back end of the server looks like when it queries the database. So that way we know what to put in after it. And in this case, we would say it equals the users. And so we can run this, it pulls down some information for us, but then we can take it to the next level and we can send, we want the username and the passwords and we can send this. Now, if we were to make this query from over here, this would not actually work. We would get an error because if you remember, there were three columns and we need to have the ID within it. And now if we send this, we get the ID, the username, and the password. So this is SQL injection in a nutshell and this is what the SQL statement looks like that is vulnerable. And this is why we put in the single quote or the double quote because it breaks everything after it. And we are now able to inject our own SQL statement to pull down information from the database. I hope you have learned something from this video. If you would like to go through SQL injections in more depth in the coming videos, please subscribe. I have a SQL injection crash course that will be coming out in the next few days.